You're watching the Highlight Zone with Wayne 15 Sports Director Glenn Marini. Local sports coverage you can count on. Uh, let's go, let's go. It's time to get in the zone. The Friday Night Lights are on. We got Justin Glenn as your host. Down to the whistle so close. Here come the highlights to show. No time for errors. Just come locked in. They've got great athletes. We got great athletes. If we have the mind, I think no one can touch us. I think everyone on our team has been itching to get back on the field. Our motto is, you know, play 48 minutes of north side football. It's all in preparation for, boom, right here this Friday night. Mike Strong, highlight zone. Mike Strong, highlight zone. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Friday night's in the zone. Friday night's in the zone. Friday night's in the zone. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Oh, man, the highlight zone is back, baby. We're talking 28th season for Fort Wayne's number one sports show. And, hey, last year we uh. We hit the ground running. You remember that? In week one, Snyder's Nick Talamantes booting that 47-yard field goal as the time expired. Would we have day one drama here in 2022? Hmm, Josh Ann, he's got the answer. He joins us with your Highlight Zone Game of the Week. Josh. Well, Glenn, it may have just been week one, but last year's 34-32 win by the Panthers over the Legends had a huge impact on the chase for the victory bell. Without that dub, Snyder wouldn't have earned a share of the conference crown, would tonight's showdown at Spooler Stadium set the Legends or Panthers up for similar success? Northside at Snyder, it's your Highlight Zone Game of the Week. To Spooler we go, Snyder striking first in the first quarter, then the Legends answering on the first play of the second quarter. That's where we pick it up from there. Now here's a guy trying to level up his game. That's right, Langston level. 66 yards to the house for the senior Snyder in front, 13 to six. That's gonna make Cincinnati Bengal Jesse Bates pretty happy later in the first half level again plunging into the end zone for his second rushing touchdown but with less than a minute to go in the half Bodie Dickerson making his north side debut finding Tay Tay Johnson in the end zone that's probably not the last time we're going to call those two on the highlight zone this season north side only down 20 to 12 at the half First drive of the third quarter, Dickerson eluding the rush again, finding Jalen Ellis. Two-point conversion fails, and it's a two-point game. But that is it the rest of the way. Snyder's defense putting the clamps down defensively. You see William Kelso with the strip sack. Northside unable to put any more points on the board, and the Panthers milking the rest of the clock away. They take this one 20-18. to it's definitely something that we'll carry over to next week, um, something we'll build on, and you know, something that we'll just keep on promoting uh, through this week and uh, through next Friday. So, you know, uh, we expected this to be a super tough game. We know that Northside is not just a pushover, you know. A lot of people expected them to be, you know, soft and not a good team, but Northside has guys, you know, that they're willing to come out and play hard every snap. We made our share of mistakes, and um, but, you know, to come and, and fight through those tough times and to pull through in, in key moments, we'll learn a lot from it. Um, but we showed a lot of toughness and resiliency, and, and that's a positive sign. Next up, Northside hosting Dwanger, and then next Friday, uh, Snyder heading to Carroll in week two. Glenn, back to you. Another two-point game between those two. Hey, speaking of the Chargers, Carroll and Lowers ready to rock. See what I did there? Uh, they split the SAC title three ways with Snyder last year. Those two squaring off in week one. First quarter, all about defense. Isaac Zay, he's going to be a name to know for the Knights in the future with the interception in the end zone to Save six points and a picture perfect D early 0 0 after one. Second quarter, Lewis starts to get going. Charlie Stansky to Braden McInturf. We're going to call a lot of McInturf this year. That would lead to a 28 yard field goal from Roel Pineda. Three zip Lures, but those would be the only points the Knights score all night. Later in the second, Jimmy Sullivan to Jaden Hill. You can bet the former Knight loved getting a touchdown at Lewis Field. Carroll takes a 7-3 lead on Hill's touchdown, and then it's Sullivan doing it again. A new face for the Chargers this year finds Camden Hirschberger for a touchdown, and Carroll goes on to roll at Lures Field 42-3. Let's go to Shields Field. Bishop Dwanger hosting the Wayne Generals. The Saints always steady. Wayne perhaps ready to take a leap forward in year three under Sherwood Haydock. Oh, first drive. In fact, first play from scrimmage for the Saints, that's Teddy Steele. Putting some mileage on those tires from 29 yards out, 7-0 Saints. Later, 
It's the defense doing it. Uh, C.J. Davis, the Northrop transfer, he's going to play college football at the thundering herd of Marshall. He shows you the skills on defense and then the skills on offense. It's C.J. Davis. Same face, different place, doing what he does. Touchdown, Saints and Dwenger goes on to topple Wayne in week one, 35 to 13. Out and about in a boy. Some people uh, might forget. Homestead's won the SEC title two of the last three years. Spartans hosting new coach Quinton Bowen and the Northwood Bruins. First quarter action. That's Jake Thrash thrashing the defense for a touchdown. 7-0. Spartans in the lead. Northwood's Keon Bates hits my man Jaden Schmank. Kid can hoop. Apparently can play some football as well down the sideline for a big game. But it was already 9-0 Homestead. Homestead's Brett Fuchs. Taking the handoff here, and Fuchs is gone. Number 19 goes 60 yards to the house, and Homestead stakes itself to a 16-zip lead. More where that came from. Second quarter, it's Peyton Slavin. Oh, Chad Zoman's glad to have that guy back. The Mason Oxier for a long touchdown, and Homestead no problem at home, 50-14 over the Bruins. Last stop in the SAC, Concordia at Southside after a year away. That guy right there, Tim Manigle. Back on the sideline for the cadets and the cadets looking good. Eli Maddox in the second quarter to a Johnny Washington who knew he played football. Washington goes 48 yards for the touchdowns. That was actually his third TD of the night. 26 to 6 Concordia in the lead late in the second. Right before half Concordia's D coming up big here. James Rusher rushing the passer. It's a strip sack Southside would recover. But again Concordia up by 20 at the half. In the third, Southside gets rolling. This is Lorenz Tabron to Omarion Washington. That's a first down into the red zone. Then it's so good, you might as well call it up again. Watch Tabron loft this one, and Washington using the strength to pull that one away. It's a touchdown, but Concordia takes care of business at Jack Wacker Stadium tonight by the final of 32 to 18. Well, that does it for the SAC in week one, but we're just getting started on the zone. Last time we saw Adam Central, they were at Lucas Oil Stadium playing for a state title around Thanksgiving. We're going to check out the Jets as they headed up uh, to Memorial Field to face the Garrett Railroaders plus Eastside. You know all about them. They're coming off a trip to semi-state last year. We're going to head up to Butler to check in on the mighty Blazers. Huntington North opens up its beautiful new football facility against Eastbrook. Leo ushers in a new era, plus we got trips to Kendallville, Columbia City, New Haven, and much more, all next on The Zone. Stay tuned for the Highlight Zone. Do you have the burn the ship mentality tonight? We're storming the beach and we're burning the ship. There's no going back. There's no retreat. You take it to them. Do we understand that? But now it's your time in the light. It's not ours. So turn it loose. Oh, great dude right there. That was Huntington North coach Bob Prescott behind the scenes on what was no doubt an exciting night for the Huntington community as Craig Baumfield. Yes, it was historic. Yes, it was legendary, but it was also built in 1929. So the Vikings do for a new home field and what a field it is. The Vikings opening their new football complex against the Eastbrook Panthers. Yeah, that's not easy knowing Eastbrook's history. Pick it up in the first quarter though. Noah Wagner had a really nice year last year as a sophomore for the Vikings and off to a good start with a 10 yard touchdown run. That's the first touchdown in that new stadium. 6-0 Huntington North. Then uh, have we mentioned Noah Wagner? Yeah, apparently he can do it on defense as well. A little fumble recovery there. So Huntington North back in business. But Eastbrook does what Eastbrook does, right? Gage Engel with a power run game. It's a four yard touchdown. Eastbrook up one at 7 6. And then Eastbrook with some D. This is Devin Stupples. And Stupples' hands are supple. Great catch for an interception right there. And Eastbrook. Hands Huntington North, a little heartbreak uh, opening that stadium. 39-26, but you can bet Brother Nation going to be back next week. Hey, it's becoming a budding Whitley County rivalry. We're talking Churubusco at Columbia City. Second quarter is where we pick it up, and it's tied seven all. But Colton Piper taking over for four-year starter Greg Bolt, who's graduated. Piper to Ethan Seavers out of the backfield. 
14-7 now, Columbia City after that score. Third quarter action, fourth and seven, they go for it. Piper pipes one into his big tight end, the senior, Peyton Shearer. That's a touchdown to give Columbia City a 20-7 lead. They weren't done. How about Josh Arntz? Man, Brett Fox is high on this dude. It's a touchdown for Columbia City, 28-7 there. And Columbia City gets Whitley County bragging rights beating the Eagles of Busco, 31-7. New era for the Purple Pride of Leo. Former Northrop coach Jason Dorfler taking over the reigning NEA champs as they were hosting Kokomo. 10-0 Leo in the second. That's Kokomo's Evan Barker with a four-yard touchdown to make it 10-7 at the half, but Leo still in the lead. They would not have the lead after this, though. Third quarter, Dre Kirby snapping one off. He goes 61 yards to the house for Kokomo and Kokomo takes a 14-10 lead. No give up in the Purple Pride. This is Jake Patton booting a field goal from 37 yards to make it 14-13. Unfortunately, Leo wouldn't score again as Kokomo ruins Jason Dorfler's debut 33-13. In Kendallville, East Noble in the 11th year of the Luke Amstutz era. That's, that's not Luke right there, though. Uh, Plymouth Rockies in year one of the Adam Handley era. He just came over from Wabash. Second quarter, East Noble rolling. Xander Brazzle, a little razzle-dazzle to David Sturdivant, who they need a big season from this year, Mr. Sturdivant. That's a first down. And then later on the drive, it's Tyson Reinbold acting boldly, stretching out for the touchdown. And East Noble, check this, up 37-0 in the second quarter. Yeah, they scored 23 points in the first quarter. Late in the second, how about some defense? You saw a lot of offense from East Noble. They can D it up as well. That was Anthony Michener with the interception right there. And then you're going to see more D. It's Ben Barker with the pick as East Noble gets off to a great start in week one, 51-7 over visiting Plymouth. Let's head out to John Young Stadium in New Haven. Nobody had a better summer than this guy, right? New Haven's Milan Graham, the junior, picked up offers from Ohio State, Notre Dame, and Alabama. New Haven hosting Marion. That's uh, not Milan, but that's Trey Bates with a touchdown to give New Haven a seven-zip lead in the first. Second quarter, more of the same. Dogs offense, Donovan Williams, formerly of Northside, finds James Barnes. That's a pretty pitch and catch right there. 13-0 as Williams is tasked we're taking over for Jakar Williams. Later, it's the dogs. Williams, you saw the arm. How about the legs? The QB keeper from Donovan Williams. 20 to zero Bulldogs, and they don't look back. Kyle Boer's team. Statement win in week one, 47 to zero over the Marion Giants. Up in Butler, east side, coming off the best season, no doubt, in school history. Blazers won 13 games last year, made it to semi-state. East side hosting Woodland, and Woodland, Oh, yeah, looking good early. That's my man, Jacob Snyder, with the touchdown run. It's 8-0 Woodland in the early going. Then, Briar Muncy for the men in green with the touchdown. Okay, it's 8-all. Muncy had 201 yards on the ground on 16 carries. But, oh, yeah, Dax Holman, we know about this guy. He can play. You saw him just breaking tackles like it was nothing. 58 yards on the scamper. He had a buck 23 on the ground, and Eastside eventually rolls over Woodland 50 to 24. The last time we saw Adam Simpson football, the Jets were playing at Lucas Oil Stadium in the 1A state championship game. AC on the road at Garrett. First quarter action, AC's Keegan Bloom with a short touchdown plunge there, and Adam Central at this point already up. 14 to zip. Michael Moses' team would continue to roll. Special teams looking pretty darn special. Gavin Cook with a pump lock recovery and touchdown. He did it all. 21 to 0, Adam Central. And then we saw Cook on special teams. How about Mr. Cook starting to simmer on offense? He breaks this one 38 yards to the house for a touchdown. And Adam Central, no doubt about it, this is a team to watch. 56 to 6 over the Railroaders of Garrett. Final stop for high school football. We got Fairfield at Goshen. Matt Thacker and the Falcons coming off the NECC Big Division title last year. Goshen was up 14 zip early in the second quarter, but Fairfield showing some life. Ethan Schmucker with a nice run up the middle, but the drive would stall. Here's why. The handoff there to Schmucker and the ball on the ground. Goshen would recover, so Fairfield still scoreless until this. Third quarter, Carson Kitson with the touchdown. And guess what? Fairfield goes on to win in overtime over Goshen 22 
to 20. Stay tuned. Your first Peter Franklin Jewelers Gem of the Night is up next on The Zone. We are the Eastside Blazers. Stay tuned for the Hot Zone. It's week one. We're almost done. Let's sit it out right. Here's your Gem of the Night. Well, there's a saying that you only get one chance to make a first impression, and tonight, somebody making an impression that we won't soon forget. In fact, you made it a lot of impressions on the defenders. Uh, it's the highest honor we've got on the Highlight Zone, and once again, it is brought to you by our good friends at Peter Franklin Jewelers. Of course, I'm talking about your first gem of the night for the 2022 high school football season, and uh, how about Dax Holman at Eastside? Mm, mm, mm. How many tackles did this guy break? Well, we're going to count him here in a second on this 58 yard touchdown run. See, he gets the football on the handoff. Dax Holman breaks the leg tackle right there, breaks another one, hammers the linebacker right there, and then would eventually break one about 10 yards outside of the end zone. Four broken tackles there. Dax Holman. A lot of people wondering what's going to happen with Eastside. No Laban Davis. Guess what? They're going to be pretty darn good. Todd Mason likes his squad. Dax Holman with your Peter Franklin Jewelers gem of the night in week one. Okay, man, week one is in the books. What is next in week two? Well, here are some of the big matchups on tap next Friday. Snyder at Carroll, based on what we saw tonight, that's going to have a huge impact on who wins the SAC. We got Bishop Dwanger at Northside. Lures is at Wayne Eastside at Adams Central. That was one of the best games we saw all last season. While Heritage is at Norwell. Norwell played at Mississippi tonight. Big expectations for Coach Gerber and the Knights down at the courtyard this season. Well, that is going to do it for week one of the Highlight Zone here in 2022. For Josh Ann, I'm Glenn Marini, and we're going to see you next Friday night on Fort Wayne's number one sports show. Have a great weekend.